Welcome back to the channel and welcome to our big uh, group test. We've got Gregorio with us. We, we've been Hello. planning this for absolutely months. months, absolutely months, literally. So we've managed to get together three of the best Japanese super naked or what do we call them? Super, liter naked. Liter naked. Liter Let's call naked, them liter yeah. naked. So we've got the CB1000. Uh, we've got the MT-10 and we've got the Suzuki GSX S1000. So we're going to put these three bikes head to head. Bit of drag racing, bit of, drag racing. Bit of tomfoolery. Closed roads, of course. Bit of fun. Closed roads. Oh, yeah, none, none of that. None of that business. And we're going to see which one of these bikes we think is the best and the best bang for the buck as well. So if that sounds of interest, get yourself a cup of something warm and chop C, roll the intro. So here are the beauties. So I've been riding the C, I've ridden the CB before, so I know that bike sort of fairly well. You've done the first ride on the GSXS, haven't you? Have you ever ridden the CB? Never thrown a leg over one, I have to say. So it'll be a first time for me in a minute. I'm assuming they're similar, but we'll see. This is the black edition. So this one is actually 1600 pound more expensive than the standard one. If it was the standard one, they're within sort of 150 quid of each other. I think it's 11 and a half for the Suzuki. 11, yeah, I think it's 11,650. On the standard version, the black edition, you get all the black extra bits and bobs, but there's no mechanical differences. It's the same bike, so it's just a cosmetic thing. I bought this bike in the last year, and I said I'd give, a, I'd do another sort of ride on this machine after I'd firm the suspension up. So I've, uh, I've preloaded it up, and we'll see if she's any more taut now. Well, the Suzuki, it's really kind of other than the brakes, which I'm not a fan of. The rest of the package to ride, I, there's not a lot to not like. It's um. It's just easy, flexible. You sort of lose yourself in it a little bit. You know, it hasn't got a lot of character. So it's, you know, you could argue it's a little bit, a little bit dull, but, but also it's predictable and nice to live with and easy. So I don't know. Any rider that rode this, I'm not saying you'd rush out to buy it necessarily, but I can't see how you wouldn't like it because there's nothing to not like. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it just does everything really well. The clutch is light. You know, the throttle response now on this is good. The gearbox is amazing. It's comfortable. The ergonomics are good. It's, you know, it just, it just lacks a bit of maybe a desirability for me and a little bit of character. It's a little bit sterile. That's the whole thing with straight fours. They, they can be a little bit characterless, <laughs> can't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. And I think, yeah. you know, in this naked category, it's all sort of, you know, about fun and, you know, excitement per, per se, and, and the straight four doesn't always give that, does it? No, I mean, I, I've grown to love straight fours again, but at the moment, probably more from a sports bike perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think they just work so well, because you get quite a lot of compromise on the road with a sports bike in terms of the ergonomics, the flexibility of a straight four makes it easier to live with, I think, all round. I would agree. Come through, let's have a look at that beauty. What's that? <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> so I think if we turn around in a minute, John, we can do a little bit of a drag race, can't we, on that bit of road? We do like a bit of a drag race. We need to know which one's quickest. Prepare to lose. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! <laughs> yeah. Damn me! I have another son six stone heavier than you, so then we'll have to swap bikes and just uh, repeat that at the we'll moment. Swap. I think you jump started a bit oh, yeah, as well yeah, there. I did jump start a little bit. You, you're right. And the, the Suzuki is really quick, actually. I gotta say, <laughs> which is not surprising, is it, with a no. Gixxer engine in? Go on, let's have a pull over then, and we'll we'll swap bikes, have another little another lap up and down there, and then we'll do the repeat the drag race again after we've got used to them a little bit. One thing's for sure. What's that? It's still good fun, the Suzuki, I can't deny. Straight fours, when the revs get out, that's when the fun starts on them, really, isn't it? Right, first time for me on a Honda CB1000. Never, ever, ever ridden one. And I must admit, other than the rather disgusting arrangement here, uh, I think it's a pretty handsome bike, to be honest. Looks pretty it's good, sort of a bit it? retro, isn't it? Yeah, that's what that is. It's a Neo Caf Honda, whatever Neo Caf <laughs> means. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. Well, the riding position is quite different. The dash. I like the dash. 
Actually, the uh, the legs are a bit higher up on this, but my knees feel they're a little bit more high cramped on, on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're quite cramped. Oh yeah, completely different. This feels more substantial, maybe. More, more it seems like more motorcycle in front of me. Yeah, th th this is it's definitely. I see a bit about their brakes. <laughs> I see a bit about their brakes. The Suzuki brakes are terrible, aren't they? They take a bit of a pull, don't they? Yeah. Terrible, maybe a bit of a strong word there. No, yeah, not that. terrible, but <laughs> there's there's no feel though, is there? No, they're, they're they're a little bit wooden, aren't they? Ergonomics, just jumping off the Suzuki onto the Honda. The Honda, you've got you sat quite a lot higher on the Honda, I think. Yeah, you, you feel like you're sat into this a little bit more. There's more leg room on the Honda, and I think that you're slightly further canted forward. Actually, the bars feel flatter on the Honda than the Suzuki, and actually my. Initial views are I prefer the riding position of this Honda. Actually, I quite like all oh, the handling's a bit odd. Feels quite different to that Suzuki actually. Oh, the, the way this rolls in, I don't like the way this falls in very much. It, that the Suzuki feels a lot more fluid. Yeah, you're definitely sat in the Suzuki a little bit more, and I think it's definitely got a bit more punch as well. I think it, I don't know what the gear, the fight. Well, we you know we look at the final gear, but it depends how the gearbox is geared as well, doesn't it? But I think the Suzuki is definitely maybe down geared a little bit still from the Honda, even though they have changed the Honda. I'm with you though. The gearbox on the Honda is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? The quick shifter on this is it takes more of a more pressure to to actuate it it's definitely a bit smoother on the honda i think i think um another thing that i've noticed it's quite nice literally jumping straight on it it is i think the honda the engine is and this is all within reason there's a bit more vibes from the engine on the honda i think i would agree it's a bit more buzzy through the bars isn't it it is a bit buzzier isn't it again not a problem but no that the hat oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I find the handling on the Honda's really odd. It's sort of like nothing in... Oh, I'm not sure I like that. Have you not noticed that? No, in what way? What are you feeling? It just sort of... Nothing happens and then it almost falls. It falls in. Yeah, it's weird. It's not as fine a handling machine, I don't think, as the Suzuki's going to be. Like I say, they, they call it a neo calf They're calling it more of a retro. They don't. They don't proclaim it to be, you know, a real sort of hyper sports bike. But it, it, I think it's probably a little bit getting used to. But I do see what it you definitely, mean. It definitely it, does. This does. This, this feels like it's got. A, this just feels a bit more neutral. This doesn't it? It could be a little bit more edgy. Yeah. That. But I think so. I, I much prefer the handling on the Suzuki. Um, the Honda feels like it's much more just of a cruise around the streets and i wouldn't want to hustle this i don't think too much i think it may be a bit shorter the honda it may be what's what you're feeling it could be a little bit shorter and a little bit more agile maybe i don't know i have to look at the specs to see if the suzuki's a bit longer and a bit a bit more stable because that is something suzuki's tend to do they tend to make their bikes stable it could be very similar to the gs x8 s and the hornet you know with the more shorter agile honda and the slightly longer more stable Suzuki. Right, let's have a little repeat of the drag race with me on the Suzuki this time. Yeah, so I think the riding position of the Honda, I think I prefer. It just feels more natural to me personally, and you've got a little bit more leg room than the Suzuki. But, and the, the engine, the gearbox is amazing. The throttle response is nice. The brakes are definitely nicer feel on this than the Suzuki. But the handling at the moment is a big no-no. I think I'd go straight through a hedge. <laughs> 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 well, we'll test that in a minute. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to test that. I think the seat's a bit wider on the Suzuki. If you've got a bigger ass, I think you've got a bit more width in the seat on this. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> I think they're so closely matched on power. I mean, it's only like five brake horsepower in here, and it's way exactly the same. I think with my additional weight on the bike. I think there's nothing in it, is there actually? Yeah, I think we do one more, but I think it's just this my additional weight causing me to lose every time. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! How was that? Was you? Uh, I did. I did get ahead of you a little bit, though, didn't I? Was... You did. You, you said three, two, then you caned it, and then said one. <laughs> you know, for the throttle. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. We have to see how the MT10 compares. Uh, I think the Suzuki so. has got it 
by I think it's a little bit more powerful, isn't it? Because I think it's a little bit more powerful, and I think it's geared slightly lower as well. But yeah, I think um, the conclusion is either bike is fine for performance. Don't let that be a deciding factor. <laughs> <laughs> I need to turn the electronics down because it keeps sort of cutting out when you do stuff like that. It's a bit weird. Yeah, this is definitely more stable and a bit, and it, like you say, it's, it's a bit more progressive, isn't it? It tips in nicely. It does. It's flowing, isn't it? This, I, 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 I got, I'd actually say, it, I don't like the handling on this, and I don't think it's just a case of I've not been riding it long because. I didn't get that impression at all on that and I ride loads of different bikes all the time and I don't get this definitely got a strange the way it tips in is odd I, I, when I borrowed that last time I wondered whether the actual chassis had a bit too much flex in it yeah maybe that's what I was hoping by firming up the suspension a bit it might help but it may have made it worse it doesn't feel wallowy or soft it's just I think it's the chassis I think I'm with you it's, it's just a strange handling characteristic but uh, it's not to say you can't get used to that but it's just when you no, jump no, off no, the, no. the super super stable suzuki isn't it yeah the suzuki i think the handling is when you're pushing on is lovely and it feels very secure but no ridden like you would ride it if you own one nice and sensibly if you know what i mean then the honda also it is very nice you know and you're not going to buy a bike like this and hoon around and throw it into all the twisties I just, I just don't think that's what it's designed for everything is very easy with that bike with the Honda it's very easy to, like the Suzuki it's exactly the same you know I can tell this is all Suzuki always do that don't they they make very easy to live with motorcycles and this this is no exception but so's the Honda and these motors in these bikes because they're older engines they're, they're so proven now let's have a swap back let's, let's see how that Honda compares now after getting off of getting off of that that traction i know it's, it needs to be turned down doesn't it it's it, it's very intrusive on this what do you think of the handling it tips in weird doesn't it on the honda it, it's much more edgy it, 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 it it's really edgy on this it's it's more nimble i'd say it's more nimble it's, it's like the hornet it's a bit like the hornet to be honest and the gsx 8s it's the same sort of thing how are them brakes <laughs> um I haven't got any. I'm just using the gearbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the brakes are lovely on this. That front brake's really progressive, really nice. Yeah, the Honda Honda's nice, aren't they? They are nice, I must admit. When they've both got um, rubber hoses as well, it's not like the, the Honda's got braided or anything. They're both, they both got rubbers on. They spin it round. Let's swap bikes and go back the other way. Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> I do like the riding position of the Honda. It feels a bit... Cafe Racer, what did you call it? Neo Racer. Ne no, Neo, 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 what do they call it? A Neo Cafe. <laughs> Neo Cafe, I think they call it. I don't know what that means, but I think they're onto something though, because it's sort of, yeah, it does have that sort of vibe. So the Honda CB1000, it's a great bike. I don't want this video to come across as we've sort of trashing it a bit and with the suspension thing i have been playing with the suspension yeah so i know you, you didn't quite get on with the handling did you no. and it is it is very a bit flighty did you firm it up then oh uh, yeah i I, I, up. I firmed up the preload in the rear yeah. and preload in the forks not all the way but yeah. quite a lot because yeah. it had absolutely nothing in it yeah and was yeah. that after the, the i rode it yes then? so okay. you haven't ridden it how hard yeah. set no. it up okay so, so you had it after i played with it yeah so so yeah. that could have had a big impact i'm sure it did oh, i'm no suspension expert <laughs> no but from your point of view it felt a lot it better. felt better there's a lot more feedback but yeah i think you know the bike isn't meant to be you know I it's agree. that neo calf it's not meant to be oh, a, sport, I, a proper sports yeah. naked yeah. it's a neo yeah. calf yeah. roadster is yeah, what definitely. Honda sort of call it so, so so of the three bikes i think the honda we were both agreed is really amazingly smooth yes. the engine's lovely the gearbox is lovely and it all feels totally sorted yeah. the handling handling characteristics are quite different yes. to the other two bikes it felt like it's got like a short wheelbase or something it did um, and and it feels like it sort of falls in very yeah. quickly and it just feels it's quite a profound difference of handling to the other it two is. and i think it's probably by design isn't it as you say because it's a different sort of category of bike even though on paper it feels like it's exactly it's the same. same yeah so we liked it but you definitely need to ride one try it and it's probably not the best bike if you're a in, in my opinion a fast a road rider yeah it's probably not the one but if you just like having grunt and pottering around and exactly enjoying the scenery 
it's absolutely amazing. Well, it's, it's got calf in the title, so if it's got yeah. calf in it, you, you sort of get an <laughs> idea that it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> for <laughs> right, riding between calves. So, I think know. it is, it, and that, that description, I think, yeah. fits it perfectly. You go and have a coffee somewhere, cruise to the next place yeah. with plenty of grunt on tap, but you take your time, and yeah. it's all a bit more leisurely. And, and it's perfect. a real easy bike to live with, isn't it? Really every, easy. Every, all the controls are nice, it's easy to ride. Dash is amazing. Dash is amazing, Definitely. the gearbox is beautiful. It, it really is, build quality is lovely. Build quality is lovely, and this, yeah. black, and this black one is more expensive, but it does look, like you say, you call yeah. it a handsome bike, and I think that it, describes it really it well. A it's a handsome it motorcycle. Handsome. So, the MT-10, let's bring that into the mix. So we've dropped the uh, CB1000R back, we've kept the Suzuki and we've brought the MT-10 out. So the main difference here is the MT-10 is obviously based on the latest superbike engine of course because this engine is yeah. still very much in the R1. Um, obviously cross plane so it'll be interesting to tell the difference. Obviously a straight four but cross plane so that makes the world a difference and I absolutely love this. I did the first ride on this bloody loved it it's really it rides yeah. really nicely but it's really interesting to compare direct compare, now. yeah definitely oh, i'm looking forward to trying it because i've not ridden an mt10 now for i want to say four years and it was only a really brief ride so it's yeah. it's a long time ago i've almost well, I've forgotten pretty much what it's like but shall i jump on board then you take the gray one <laughs> <laughs> well the first thing I noticed is the seat is rock hard on this isn't it? Yeah it's wide though again it, yeah, it is, it is, no, it is it, wide but bloody hell has it got any padding at all it's like sitting on a plank. They do do a comfort seat so they obviously want you to buy the comfort seat don't they? It's really hard that is. But it's wide though I, I like that because it's a little bit it's this you're right the Suzuki has more padding but it's not as wide it's not as supportive so you've actually got your weight on a small well if, it depends how big your ass is for my ass that Yamaha fits my ass better. No, the tank, I like the tank as well. The tank's quite wide, but it gives you, you really, yeah, you feel like you're really gripping onto it. The foot pegs are quite low as well, aren't they? They are very low. Yeah, it's comfortable, um, provided you don't, you like your seats made of granite. The other big difference with that bike, it's got the R1 frame, so it's not got a, a dedicated frame, you know what I mean? So it's using the full R1 frame on that bike. So if it doesn't handle, they've done something very wrong. It's a naughty bike that, it's a bit like the Tuono, <laughs> you know, but it's got that initial pull, you know, that's what that cross plane brings, isn't it? That initial drive. The brakes are nice on the MT10. They're better, aren't they? I, th I thought they weren't great when I first rode it, but compared to the Suzuki, they're brilliant. The handling is um, really nice. I can see straight away you've like shot off on that compared to being on the on the Honda. Oh, I love the noise of the MT10. <laughs> it's so good. Ah, oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> yeah, this. I'm sorry to say, I think it's my favourite already of the three. It's a different sort of thing though, I think this feels more of a super naked. I mean it is two, 2,000 plus more expensive than, you know, it's a 14,000 pound motorcycle, whereas this is an 11 and a half, so you know, there's a big difference in price here, you've got, you've got to bear that in mind. The, the Yamaha feels much more like the Super Duke and the Tuono in terms of its category, whereas I think the CB1000 and the GSX-S1000, they feel like street bikes don't they I, I, I suppose for want of a better phrase because alex has got a toona now isn't he a new one so you've ridden a bit of a few miles on that running it in haven't you you know it's not run in yet but you've sort of spent a bit of time with the toona my, my feeling when i rode the mt10 was it was like a, a more streetable toona a bit more comfortable than the toona and a bit more of a street bike obviously i don't think it was big good on track as the toona but i thought it made a really nice street bike I agree and I'll tell you what, thank you, mm. there, there's a load of leg room on it as well and I'm six foot one, it's very comfortable, the dash is nice, it's quite small isn't it the dash? Yeah it is small, I think it's 4.2 inches I think so it is, for a TFT it's pretty small compared to the, but it's a nice layout isn't it, I mean it looks, it looks nice, it's straight off the R1 again. I must admit initial impressions of the MT10 are really nice. And the handling, unlike the CB, it just feels fluid and it works. I definitely, I'd go for the comfort seat. I'm telling you that already. It's just too hard. But you know, again, it's not a massive. It is nice and wide. It's just too hard. If you've got a big wide ass like me, you'll appreciate the extra width. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't like laying that Honda over. Whereas this is just, oh yeah, lovely. 
And you can tell that's got some proper superbike pedigree, can't you, in the frame and the chassis. Makes a nice noise. It makes lovely noise, doesn't it? And there's vents in the tank to let some of that noise out for, for this year because they've obviously made it a bit quieter for Euro 5. I'm getting that sort of I love it feeling on this. <laughs> <laughs> I did. As soon as I got on it, I was like, oh, yeah. this is fantastic. It's really nice, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. No, it, except, you've got to accept it's a bit of a personal preference on the category of bikes that we like, though. So I'm trying to forget that. We're both hooligans, so that is naturally going to appeal to us for our hooligan, hooligan nature. I, f I feel that this feels safer because it just feels more capable. So even when you're just pootering around or pottering around rather, you know, it just feels nice and safe and easy. And yeah, it's, I, I really like it. The riding position is lovely. It's a perfect street bike riding position, I think. Plenty of room in the leg. Yeah, okay, the seat's not got much padding in it, but you know, with the comfort seat, I think it'll do everything you ever want. Yeah, I agree. And it's got a full IMU, you know, slide control. It's got all of the, the full R1 electronic package on that. And that's why it's a much more expensive than the Suzuki, isn't it? So what was the list price of the base MT10 then? I think it's 14.2. I'll put it on the screen if it's wrong, but I think it's 14.2. So yeah, it, it's, it is a lot more expensive. Yeah, that is quite expensive. That's getting quite expensive, isn't it? But you can, you can feel it, I think, straight away. And it makes the noise is absolutely addictive. I love that whine as well. When you knock it down and you've got in a higher gear and it's got that like whine like the, the V4, like the Tuono does. I'd say initial initial feeling is I like it as much as the Tuono, which I adore. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, and actually it's got some benefits. The gearbox, even when you're very light on the throttle and low down, it's very smooth. So it's, it's actually got some refinements over the Tuono. Um, and I'm not criticising the trainer because that is, is such an amazing bike. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> well, you could wheelie this everywhere if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great that you could have the traction off. Sorry, yeah, the traction on and the wheelie control yeah. off. You know, that's a brilliant. I mean, that's a really unusual for the Japanese to do that. You know, that's much more of a European thing, isn't it? It seems quite tall geared as well, the Yamaha, doesn't it? Like first seems quite long. I think that's that Suzuki's particularly low geared, isn't it? It is, yeah. Does sound good, doesn't it? Drag race, drag race. I don't think there's gonna be any surprises here, to be honest. <laughs> I think you've got 20 horsepower more than me. That's 162 horsepower, whereas this is 149, isn't it? So. You've got more power than me. Ready? Three, yep. two, one, go! Oh, she's wheeling! <laughs> this isn't too far away though, to be honest. No. Let's do one more going back the other way. Then we'll have to swap. Do you see this wheelie though? Yeah, it was coming up, wasn't it? That's the trouble with that. The wheel's coming up, so you've got to close the throttle, haven't you? Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's where you're losing your time, you see. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> <laughs> this is just like wheeling. Just plating along. <laughs> it's, so, it's so much fun. <laughs> put, put over have here. a go on this. Let's see that. Back, I, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, we'll turn around. You have a go. It's so cool. Let me have another go on the on the Yamster. I'll tell you what though, fun factor, 10 out of 10 for the MT10. So our second placer was really the Suzuki, wasn't it? And yeah. it, you know, it's a surprisingly good bike. And I think we, we yeah. summed it up at the end and said, you know, it's not the most exciting machine, but it does everything very, very well, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah, it's it, the handling on it, I really liked. Yeah, very, yeah. very sure-footed, wasn't it? Really sure-footed. You just feel it's very natural, um, quite firm, I'd say, which yeah. is a consideration. So yeah. it is quite firm, but you certainly get loads of feedback and it's, it's very good. Riding position ergonomics, your feet are quite, or sorry, your yeah, legs are quite it's, bent it's, up. It's, so it's, it's a bit more, it's a bit sportier, rounder, it's it? a bit yeah. sportier, but handling, I love it and I felt very confident on it. But yeah, it's just a little bit uninspiring, even though it does everything very well and it's very quick actually, isn't it? It is fast. It, it, yeah. it's a fast I mean, it wasn't bike. that far off the MT10 no, in no, the drag race. It's a fast bike, it, yeah, which is not is. to be 
not surprising really yeah. given its sort of GSXR heritage engine. Um, but yeah, so I think it's just, um, I actually prefer the Honda looks. Yeah, quite I, a bit, I do. Actually. Yeah, I, I think, think the Honda, I feel better on. Yeah. But, um, I, but I think the Suzuki just pips it yeah. in terms of its overall and capability. It, and I think if you're a bit taller, the comfort's a bit better on the Suzuki. Even though your legs are a bit more cramped, the seat's more comfortable. The seat is I, I've, comfortable. I've struggled yeah. with this. Yeah, this, yeah on, I, I, more, I know we had a yeah. very quick swap in about, so yeah. not so much when we no, did the, no. the, the test, but riding that a bit more. I've yeah, exactly. It. And again, everything works very well on the Suzuki. The quick shifter blip is yeah, lovely, particularly at the lower speeds or when you're not quite. I yeah. found the quick shifter and blipper really smooth and the gearbox is lovely on it. It's it's just easy. Yeah. I mean, I don't I defy anyone to buy one or sorry, to ride one and not like it. Yeah. Whether you'd fall in love with it, I'm not so sure, but there's nothing not to like. And for eleven and a half thousand pounds, I mean it's in this market, it's not a huge sum of money, no, is it? No, and, not at all. Not and at it's all. a really nice, fast, capable. And you could do everything yeah. on that. You could tour it, you could do a track day on that. Yeah, you could. You could you could do I think you could do everything on it. No problem at all. Yeah. You know? My just, only criticism, actually, just uh, was the fact that the brakes were... Oh, yeah, the brakes. Apart from the brakes. Apart from the brakes, which yeah. which isn't a small thing, but I think easily fixable. That's easily fixable. It's easily fixable, yeah. but they're just, you know, nothing sort of happens to start with. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit disconcerting and, and, and there's no feel. It, um, you, things like brakes, when you're swapping between bikes, that's when it really notices you, it as well. Exactly. You sort of get, if you're just riding it's your only bike, you probably live and you think, well, I've got one and the brakes are fine. Yeah. But it's when you swap between something which has got sharp brakes, which the but, Honda has got particularly sharp exactly. brakes. Exactly, yeah. And you really notice it, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely needs a pad replacing it at a minimum. Pads, um, I think a decent set of pads probably go a long way to fixing it and then so. some braided lines and I think it'll be absolutely yeah. sorted. Nothing yeah. really that you yeah, couldn't nothing. sort out. So a good bike and the price of that one was 11.6 or 11.5? 11.5, yeah, 11.5. Uh, on the road, good bike, yeah. And then the other thing about it, just as a final comment, is just the sort of the stacked headlight look. I know it's a yeah, personal, personal thing. It's not thing not for me. It? I yeah. think it looks. A, I know you you think it's nicer looking. I, I than think it's nicer looking than you. I think it's okay. I, I mean, I'm not blown away by it, but I, I think it looks fine. Yeah, I, I don't think fine. anyone's going to be throwing their knickers at you as you ride by <laughs> on the GSX S thousand. <laughs> to be honest, but you never know. Oh, it's much more cramped on the Suzuki. This is really spacious, isn't it? It is. And you're right, the seat is hard, but it's much more support. It goes, you know, it feels around my bottom more. Which I think is, is helps, because if you, you know, you've got weight on more, your bum over a wider area, it's better than having a very thin seat, even if it's got more padding on it. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> you don't hold this at full throttle, no. do you? No, you, exactly. You're like three quarters throttle because it just feels like it's gonna yeah. come right up if you give it any more. <laughs> it feels more satisfying though, doesn't it? Oh, it does. I don't know if I've got the confidence to pin it and hope the wheelie control's good. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the issue. I, that I guess that comes a bit more time of riding it, you know? Yeah. I don't know how sophisticated that wheelie control is. <laughs> I know I'm on this, I'm staying on this now. <laughs> yeah, right. I think the riding position is nicer than the Suzuki as well. Especially being bigger, I mean, maybe if you're a shorter rider, maybe, it's, it, but for, certainly for someone my size, it feels more spacious. The pegs are a bit low. I do feel like I can ride this all day long with the, with the comfort seat, <laughs> I'll add. <laughs> hey! Yeah, I think that wheelie control is actually quite nice, isn't it? It's not too aggressive on the cut. It's lovely, isn't it? On the, on the Yamaha, it's so nice, isn't it? It just, it works, but it, it's playful, isn't it? And smooth. Yeah, it really is, really smooth. And that's the IMU, isn't it? That's the difference with the, the latest and greatest electronics. It makes a massive difference with that sort of thing. You can hustle the Suzuki, though. I, I do like it. You know, it feels quite basic, but it's all there. And it, yeah, if you're experienced, it's um, it's good fun. There's nothing wrong with the handling. No, there's not. There's not. I think the chassis is really good on the Suzuki. I think it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I prefer the MT10. I'm not going to lie. I think the MT10 is actually pretty much perfect for my kind of size and my riding style. I love it. Yeah, I guess the MT10 is all. It's all about the looks, isn't it? That's that's the thing with the MT10, and I, th I think that's why a lot of people. Don't, don't consider one because it's a bit out there with the styling, isn't it? I think the new one's better. The original one, I was never sure I could love it. I think this one is better, but it's still quite out there, isn't it? I think the front of it, 
and the back of it as well isn't isn't as good as it could be maybe you do forget about all that the moment you're riding it though don't you it's, it's just whether you can look back at it once you parked it up no i know i think that's a fair point it's very odd looking and a bit of an acquired it looks a bit like cyclops at the front if you if you think of the movie the fly the, the the jeff goldblum one i'll put a picture on the screen and and once you've seen it unfortunately you can't unsee it <laughs> If you're riding, I know we're not comparing it to the Tuona or the Italian bikes, but there's always some sort of compromise a bit with the yes. Italian bikes, isn't it? If you're in town yeah, and agreed. stuff like that. Whether that's be, you know, on the Tuona, it can have that sort of bit of a lash to it sometimes. Whereas I think this is, it's very, this clutch I find a little bit snatchy, but I think it's just a case of getting used to it. Oh, oh it's rampant this, isn't it? It really is rampant, but it's got a nicer throttle response than the Tuona. The Tuona is very aggressive, yeah. isn't it? It's, you've got to really finesse the Tuona. You don't have to finesse this quite as much. I know this isn't a Tuona comparison, but I think this bike is that good. We're now talking about comparing it to the next yeah. level, aren't we? So the bike we both thought was the top top of the tree, in our opinion. Bear in mind, we are both hooligans. So we have yeah. tendencies to like bikes which are a little bit on the hooligan side. So yeah. the MT-10 was really right up our street, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. Really. But it is a very fun motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, I I sort of touched on on the video, but I think it's a bit. It's very much like the Torono, but it's such an easy to ride, easy yeah. bike to live with. So if, if you're really fancying a Torono, but are put off by the whole Italian thing, and yeah. it, it's such an That's easy really bike. And I've done a bit of research and reliability. There's People have got nothing bad to say about no, it on reliability, no. and, and and you know it's. I think it's a really nice. The build quality. It's, it's hard to it's hard to fault, isn't it? And it, as you say, it's really comfortable. Yeah. Feels really natural. Yeah. The engine feel the feeling of it is lovely. Yeah. Really engaging. It sounds amazing. Yeah. The riding position's comfortable. The seat's amazing. It's uh, a I, bit hard, but it's, it's, very, it's a bit hard. But it's, it's nice got the width. It can easily fit. You know, a comfort seat. Oh, you need a yeah. Put a comfort seat, but it's nice and wide. The shape of it's good. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. It's, it's definitely yeah, yeah, you could yeah. do with extra padding, but it, but it's good. It, uh, it's a, it's a really really. Good I, I think almost everything about it is almost ten out of ten, apart from probably the looks. And, yeah. I, and I think that's why you don't see these everywhere on the streets because yeah. it's very marmite, mm. um, the, the looks of it. I mean, I, I, I even like the naked, when I first brought this model out, I was like, oh, you know, it doesn't look any better than the old one because the frames all look more exposed now. Yeah. But seeing it in the flesh, it definitely looks better in the flesh yeah. than it does in photos. It's definitely one of those bikes. Yeah. And then all the attention to detail, like the engine finish and the swinging arm, this little gun metal colour. Yeah. And I really like yeah. that colour scheme as well. Yeah. But I could live with all of that, but it's just the headlight arrangement. I'm not sure I could yeah. live with But even that is growing on me. I, I, I've enjoyed riding it so much that I'm sort of starting to appreciate yeah. even the yeah. looks a little bit because, yeah. I mean, I've even been looking on eBay to see what how much you can buy one for. Oh, I've, really? Yeah. Well, you're actually tempted. I'm, I'm getting sort of semi-tempted, yeah. yeah. I yeah. really want to try the SP version now. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, that is just... Well, I'd like to see... So many boxes. I'd like to see the SP version. Yeah, because, exactly. Because it looked, you know, on the, photos, on the previous model, yeah. it looks nicer in the SP version. So this, it might look amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't hate the looks. I think they're definitely unique <laughs> and it is you know the front end it's just a bit yeah it's a bit odd isn't it's it a bit, it's a bit it looks too like, face like it looks like know? cyclops isn't it the no front? it's the fly I, I put a picture in the <laughs> it's video cyclops. it's the fly honestly it's the fly <laughs> but, it, but that aside to ride it's amazing um it is fantastic and um if you owned one you're gonna have a great time because you and you don't and i know you want to go into your garage and admire the bike that you own but you're gonna get on this and yeah. every time you ride it you're gonna be feeling pretty decent because i, I think you you even though you won't get that satisfaction from looking at it you'll get that satisfaction mm. of just it's such a fantastic bike and you'll love it yeah yeah you'll you'll love it well know? the interesting thing is because it is very similar to tuono um and actually the tuono the latest gen there's mixed views on the looks of that anyway, well, there aren't is. there? Yeah, yeah. So not everybody no, love, yeah, loves no, the looks. It's, it's um, all, yeah. So I think that maybe it's just a compromise that you kind of have to accept. Price of the MT-10 again, remind it's me It's 14 something. I'll put yeah. it on the screen. Which again then is not cheap. It's not, it's cheap. not cheap, but... You're into sort of discounted Super Duke territory. You are. What we're going to have to do, because that is pushing, that is a proper Super Naked. I, yeah, I would I say so. the MT-10 is a Super Naked. So I think we're going to have to now put that up against... The Toyota. The Toronto, and maybe the, the best Duke. of the European stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so the, the Street Fighter. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think I think probably Toronto, MT10, and maybe Super Duke. Yeah. 
for, and see yeah. how see where and that'll be the SP version. So we'll borrow the SP for brilliant. that because that'll be yeah. more comparable. Because we've we'll yeah. borrowed the Super Duke Evo and electronic that's, um, suspension, semi semi active, that's semi active yeah. as well, wasn't semi active. So they've all got the Olin yeah. semi active. Yeah. So is that apart from two then Olins on there? Yeah, CC two Olins. Yeah. Obviously, the Super Duke's got the um, WP. Yeah. So sorry, maybe a bit predictable that we prefer the Yamaha. Maybe was it predictable? Probably a little. Probably bit, a little probably bit. Probably a bit predictable. Bit. But I think it, it genuinely is the yeah. best bike here. Yeah. Um, but it is a lot more expensive than the other two bikes. Yeah. Um, I think the Suzuki, if you looked at it pound for pound, the Suzuki is definitely on a par probably, with the Yamaha yeah, because yeah. it's so good and yeah. it's so you know brilliant to ride yeah. and a lot cheaper. I think one of the major differences between them is the electronics, isn't it? Yeah. And that's where your extra money's going because the, the obviously the MT10's got the full yeah. R1 electronics. You yeah. can separate your wheelie control, your traction control, and certainly the CB. It's very intrusive. It, we yeah. had it on the lowest setting of traction yeah. control when we were out on it. Yeah. It's only got to come up a little bit, and the whole thing shut down completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't even go back on the gas. Then no, they're very basic. They're very basic. On the and, Honda, and, and, Suzuki, aren't they? and people say electronics. I don't want that anyway. I'll turn it off. But the latest electronic systems are so mm. good. These. Days. If you've got a bike which has got an IMU and all of the latest bells and whistles around electronics, they are so good, aren't they? Yeah. And because the MT10 with electronics stuff all the time, a bit like the Super Duke, it's so wheelie prone, isn't it? It's really? nice to have that yeah, little nice. bit of. Security. Yeah. Well, when we were doing the drag races, <laughs> if you, if, yeah, if, even with the electronics on, if yeah, like, it, you didn't really want to pin it, no, but because you, you're just fearing of it just yeah, going skyward. But you, I, 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 you'd almost like, is is it going to keep it? This yeah. hovering? Is it? Yeah. Is electronics it hovering, hovering it like that, or is, is it, it me hovering it like that? Exactly. But exactly. yeah, it's um, but they are no. so good at electronics. Yeah. Whereas if that had been the CB, it would shut it down, bang, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, know, you got nothing. Very good. Very good, yeah. So Very enjoyable go. review, though. All good bikes, actually, in their own right. Yeah. And actually, probably a little bit under um, discussed, aren't they? And yeah. reviewed because they're a little bit below yeah. the radar, aren't they? But yeah. they're very, 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 very good. So coming up, we've got a couple more comparisons. We've got the Rocket 3 and the Diavel coming up. We've also got the KTM Duke 890R versus the new Triumph Street Triple RS. That is going to be So that'll good. be a good one. Middle, battle be, of the Middleweights. Battle of the Middleweights. We're going to do the Hornet, uh, the GSX 8S, and the winner of that we're going to put the case the KTM 790. So, I'm looking forward to that, actually, because yeah, you've obviously be ridden the Suzuki, haven't you? Yeah, which, yeah. The launch will be very good. So I'm really looking yeah. forward to that. And actually, I think the stack headlights of the yeah, it might a little bit looks better. nicer than yeah. the because it's like obviously an adaptation of the GSX S1000, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It looks quite looks Agreed. quite good in the pictures, yeah. I think, or in the videos. So, after. so if you want to see our comparisons, remember to hit that subscribe button, and we'll both see you on the next video. Cheers, guys.